Okay, uh, for guys that haven't seen Norm's work, uh, he um, uses the planets and uh, nodes GAN, and uh, you know he has all these great dates based upon what he does. And you know he started off uh, using astrology to meet girls, and then he and pick horses, and ended up at the SIBO. Uh, as you know, one of the original members of the Chicago Board of Options Exchange, and I've been talking to Norm for several years, and uh, he offers uh, a course, a free course, uh, to get started with, and uh, he could teach you things that are becoming a lost art. So, um, welcome to Face. Welcome back, Norm. How are Thank you? Thank you, Dale. Thanks for having me on your show. Just to give a quick uh, 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 sort of add on to what you're saying, I have about 50 years experience doing this. Been studying the markets uh, since 1966 when I was 15 years old. And I was on the CBOE and the Chicago Board of Trade for 12 years back during the 70s, uh, 70s and 80s, you know. So, and I studied, uh, uh, I was fortunate. I stumbled on, and while I was in college, stumbled on astrology, and then later I found uh, stumbled on Mr. Gann, and I learned that Mr. Gann was an astrologer, and that was the main thing he was doing. So I don't know if you have any people out there who, who uh, are trying to figure out Gann, but that's it. So anyway, if you like to, you know, they, you know if you're not familiar with Mr. Gann, Mr. Gann, Debbie D. Gann is considered the greatest market technician of the 20th century. And he did. Uh, it had amazing market timing, and I happen to know I talked to somebody who worked with him for ten years. They said that first and foremost, Mr. Gann was astrological. So let's dive right into it now. We're going to go back yeah. to a couple of weeks, so we can we go back and review previous cycles. So all these events I have on the screen now, I copied and pasted them right out of my letter. I have a monthly letter that I've been doing for forty-two years. And they're right out of my letter. So we'll go over the different points here, and then I'll show you the charts and see how the markets responded to these different astro points. So uh, AC is after the close. The mark, you know, the uh, futures trading day is only about a fourth of the uh, day. You know, twenty, you know, roughly four to six hours versus twenty-four hours. So most of the things tend to occur overnight. So here we have uh, July 7th, AC after the close. We have the moon's north, though. That's as of, as the moon goes around the Earth. It intersects with the uh, highway of the planets, called the, and that's called the ecliptic. And that point is moving in a cycle backwards through the zodiac in an 18.6-year cycle. That lined up with uh, Uranus, or Uranus was on the 4th of July, Back in 1776, when the good USA, USA was founded. And believe it or not, and the founding fathers didn't even know about Uranus because it wasn't discovered until about 1781 by Sir William Herschel. So anyway, let's see. That all sounds pretty crazy, I know. Let's see if it works or not. So we're going to be looking at fin U.S. financials, which are U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. And then we're going to, uh, you might want to take a screenshot of these. It'll be easier to follow through, follow along when I show you the charts. Okay, we got the ninth. That was a new moon, and we always look at the moons, new moon, full moon. We got a full moon coming up tonight, and so we might get a little sample of what we might expect. So we look for a major change in trend in near financials, grains, precious metals, and silver. And then the uh, ninth, uh, that was a weekend. The ninth was a weekend. And then uh, also we had Jupiter, again, line up with that U.S. Uranus point. Major change of trend. You know, anything we have, to, anything to the U.S. natal chart, that's what it's called. Take a snapshot of where the plants were at the time of the founding of the U.S. Uh, USA, and that's called the natal chart. And so anytime we have something lining up with that, then we look at U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. Then the night of the 12th, that was a Monday night, uh, we'll be looking at any time uh, we have something overnight, we look at the next day's opening. So we'll be looking to trade early uh, early the next day. 
Mars was apihelion. What's that? Well, Mars is about a two-year cycle around the sun, and apihelion, and, and the planets go around the sun in elliptical fashion, egg-shaped, not in a circle. So there's a point where they're the farthest away and we're the closest, and this is from the Greek helios, the Greek for sun, and if you have the A in the front, it means afar. So if apihelion, Mars at its farthest point is two-year cycle. We've been looking at the corn, the gold, and by the way, I forgot to mention, all these points relate to the stock market because the stock market is a big basket of everything. It tends to respond to all these points, whereas all the other markets tend to be narrow filters and only respond to certain factors. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, the 13th, where we had a, a 13th afternoon. We had another point to the U.S., again, to U.S. stocks, T-bonds, U.S. dollar. And then the night, uh, uh, overnight of the, of the weekend, uh, the 16th, that was a Friday, a weekend. And then we uh, had Mercury get to zero north latitude. What is that? The plants go around the sun like horses on a carousel. They go round and around, and they also go up and down. And when they get to that midpoint of up and down, that's zero latitude. And that tends to be a very powerful point, as you shall see when we look at these charts. And Mercury has to do with the grains. And, of course, keep in mind, everything relates to the stock market. So that could be an important point for the stocks. So there we go. Now we're going to move ahead and start looking at the charts here. Here's the corn. I had the corn uh, for the moon and the uh, Mercury point. And there, and, and, oh, and Mars, happy healing because uh, we're uh, it's something to do with the sun. And the sun is golden, and so is corn. That's how simple this is. It's first grade logic. So there's the moon there. You had a very nice chance, the opportunity. There's your weekend there. There, uh, the, the moon, new moon. And guess what? That's the low of the month for corn. So if you oh. bought corn, you could have made some nice money uh, nice. on the on the way up. There's uh, there's our Mars Happy Healing did not work for the corn, so that's a miss. And that's here's the uh, methodology. Notice the corn was going down, down, down. So we'll be looking for a change in trend, a low in this case uh, to buy corn, and then it's going up. So we'll be looking to sell, and about seventy five percent of the time, the market reverse on these points. Now we get over here to our mercury point and look at that. There's a nice little top there for a corn on our mercury point on the, over the weekend of the 16th. And now we're going to move ahead. Here's soybeans. Soybeans were not as clear. So, you know, you, so if you just start, uh, got a little wedgy fat pattern here, if you drew a, a red uh, a trend line across the tops of those bars and what, if it broke out right on the opening of the 19th, right after the moon, and then it was up on up and away. And there's our mercury point is, I think, oh, oh, wait, oh yeah, that's for July. That's that's back in June. So that's the high of the month for July right there on our mercury point for soybeans. Here's wheat. It was really beautiful. Look at that. You're buying right on the low there on the moon, and there's your mercury point. And you it took a day or two to top it out. And it only went a few pennies against you the next day. And then down. So that those are winners. Okay, yeah. here's if we go sideways, it's Newton's law for a reaction. There's an opposite reaction, and the opposite of the sideways is just more sideways. So we don't play sideways, we take a pass, and there's your goal going sideways at the moon and Mars at uh, 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 because you know this it has to do with the sun. And we, we were going to look at gold, and gold is golden like the sun. You see, that's how that works. I know it sounds silly, but I know it works. Here's silver. If going sideways, we do nothing. Here's your S&P. we got the second half of the month here. We got a little wild and crazy. Uh, you, you had a guy just talking about the, uh, well, we'll get to that in a minute, the low that we had over here. Uh, anyway, we had uh, had a low there on the, uh, oh, I had a U.S. point there for a, lo a nice low there. Then we went up here, and I was... Uh, Let's see, we got that's the moon. We are a day early on the moon, and we had a U.S. point, another U.S. point there. But Mars Apihelion, that was right there. That was near the, uh, we went just a little bit, two handles higher on the S&P over here on the opening of the next day. You're very close to the high, which was all-time high, by the way. And one day ahead, and if you hung in there, you were well rewarded because then 
it had a, dropped 160 handles on the S and P E mini. That's uh, let's see, 100. That's eight thousand dollars in just a few days. And then you went down here to this low. We had mercury at zero latitude over the weekend, and we had the big down on Monday. And I was looking for a low there on Monday, and we got it. And a bad thing is I put a red arrow there because look where the opening is. If you bought there, you would have taken about 70 handles of heat. So that's not acceptable amount of risk. So despite having the right day for the low, I marked it wrong anyway because it's too much volatility. So, okay, so you probably would have got stopped out, you know. Okay, so there we go. And let's move ahead now. Here's your T-bonds. They were just about perfect. You had the high day of the, uh, right there. And then we had two points right there, for which was ahead of that low. One day, just that one day ahead of that low. And then it was up, up, and away on the T-bonds. Then we had the U.S. dollar there. So here comes your currencies now, right near the, a nice low there. And then now you have a nice pop-up. Here's your Aussie dollar, Mike. And there we go. You're making a top there. And then you're headed down. Here's your British pound. Very jolly good, old chappy. <laughs> and there we're making a top there. And there we go. We got the Canadian dollar. Make a little top there and then going down. Here's your euro. You can see it rallied into the moon and then rolled over and went down. Here's our only miss was the yen. Did not play along. And here's your Swiss franc making a nice top there. And then down right on the moon. So we had all of your currencies. I know your folks like the currencies. And we had six out of seven currencies all dancing nicely to the moon. Okay. Now here, if you add up the green arrows and the red arrows, we had 19 winners, five misses out of 24 total for 79.17% winners. And notice I have no moving averages. I have no oscillators. I don't have to forecast in it two weeks in advance or one week in advance. You just wait till you get to the magic time and see what the market's doing. If it's going up, we'll leave it looking to sell. If it's going down, you're looking to buy. It's that simple. You want to simplify your life, simplify your trading. This is the way to go, in my opinion. Okay. All righty, here we go. Here's what's coming up, uh, coming up ahead here now. Remember, all points point to the stock market plus these other markets. Uh, the uh, Over the weekend here, the 23rd weekend, we have Mercury perihelion, which is the opposite of, I talked about Mars and apihelion. This is the opposite. Mercury will be as closest point to the sun over this weekend, and we'll be looking for change in trend for corn, soybeans, and wheat because it's Mercury, and also perihelion would emphasize the corn because it has to do with the sun, and corn is golden, and so is the sun. Then we have a full moon. This weekend, right on top of that mercury point, and that makes everything even more powerful and major change in trend. Again, we have for a moon, we have the financials, grains, precious metal, and copper because the full moon is in the sign of Aquarius, and that's the electrical sign, and copper is the electrical conductor. And then with the later in the week, next week, we have that'll be Tuesday night. Jupiter will be, which is now retrograde, it's going backwards. It looks like it's going backwards from here on Earth due to royalty motion. It'll be retrograding out of the sign of Pisces and into Aquarius. And so we'll be looking at cocoa, copper, uh, hogs, oil, silver, soybeans, and T-bonds. And then the night of the 29th, we will have geocentric. That's from the point of view of the Earth. Mars will enter the sign of Virgo, and that's important for soybeans. So here's the two charts, three charts that I didn't show you on our review because they were not indicated. But here's what's coming up. So you need to look at these markets at the magic time. But this weekend, you want to look at copper. All these charts were done last night. So they may not be up to date. Well, you know, it's 8 in the morning, so not a lot has happened, I don't think. But uh, there we go, 8.30 in the morning. And so there we go. So copper continues to rally into the weekend. That's a potential top on Monday's opening. Here's cocoa. That's not coming up until... Uh, next week, so at the time, uh, so that was the uh, 27th, I think. Yep, night of the 27th, Tuesday night. If the cocoa has taken uh, either rallied significantly or dropped significantly, you'll be looking to buy or sell accordingly. You want to buy, sell the strength or buy the weakness. And here's the piggies going 
kind of sideways or higher. Hopefully, they'll take get more of a trend going into Tuesday night, the 27th. And that's what I have today. Dan. They're not kosher. Yeah. Right. Well, they. I think they're thinking of starting to, to trade the kosher hogs, too. Uh, oh, to put a you bunch of what, rabbis. Hey, do you pool. know what a kosher hog says? What? White vey. <laughs> okay. All right. I used to do that on the floor. They loved it. All right. So here's your course, huh? Yep. Well, I have a lot of several things. I have a swing trading letter, which is what I just showed you. I have yeah. a date trading letter to trade the SB mini. And we also and I also teach astrology. So yeah. I have three paths that you can follow. You can do any one or all of them. And here's how they get a hold of me. And here we go. We want to take a screenshot of my contact information. Uh, I'm here in sunny Naples, Florida, 239-594-3939. There's my yeah. email, Ann Winsky with a Q in the middle, Ann Bark with a Q, mail.com. Not a G, that's a Q. Everybody gets it mixed up. And then Ann Winsky underscore one. And let's see, I got one more thing for you, Dale. While we, everybody writes down my contact information. Looking forward to helping some of your folks. There. I mentioned we were having a full moon. Uh, actually, tonight, I got a picture of that right here. Can you see that, Dale? No, you have to be a new share if you want to show it. What's that? Oh, you, you got to go to share? Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to how stop do, sharing we... and then share again. Oh, okay. How do I think? Go to... All right, let me look. Okay, let me check that out. Sorry, sorry, we have a little delay here. Let's see, how do we do that now? Let's see. Boom, up on boom. top, stop sharing up and then there, new okay. share. New share. How about new share? Yeah, that's it. All right, there we go. I think I have it. No. There, how about that? Yeah, there it is. That's nice. the full moon setting early this morning uh, over the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, okay. beautiful. Okay. Okay, cool. Huh? Got yeah. a reflection on the water there. And so there we go, Dale. Uh, okay. So any, any, do you have people ask questions or anything like that? Any questions for Norm? It's a cue, Cedric. Have you been to India, Ronit wants to know. Have I been to India? No, but I've been to Indiana. I grew up there. Okay, <laughs> good one. Uh Okay, any other questions? They're saying you give uh, uh, DJs, did I, uh, was there a gold chart? Yeah, early on, it'll be in the recording. Can you show the dates again? Okay, I'll go those back to the top of this, back to the top of my notes. There, there you go. Okay. The oh, new that's dates. the old, that's, that's the old yeah. one you want. The new one, the new sorry ones. about that. Yeah. There we go, there we got you, got you now. There you go. Okay. When's Haley's a, Comet coming back? Uh, that's every 76 years. You know, there's an interesting story connected to that about, you know, the story about Mark Twain? No. He was born on Haley's Comet, and he oh. died on Haley's Comet. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. Boy, and what he a connection. He, I think he predicted it, too, that he was going to die when Haley's Comet came back. Wow. Uh, someone's asking, uh, I think, Paul, if you have a PDF or anything on what you teach. Well, you can call me up and talk to, to me. That's even better. Yeah. He's in uh, Great Britain. So What's that? Uh, well, he can he call a, me on he's Skype in the UK. for free. He can call yeah. me on Skype for free. Yeah, that, that there you go. Okay. There you go. Here's um, my contact information again. Any idea on Saturn-Uranus conjunction? I think it's on December 2021. I know you don't look out that far. You go a month at a time. Saturn and Uranus conjunction? Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen this year. They, they're saying D2021. Yeah. Maybe you're talking about maybe they're thinking of Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. That happened last December. If copper is the electric indicator, wouldn't gold be a better connector indicator? I don't know. I don't worry about it. I, you know, I grew okay. up. You know, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I grew up with the uh, hearing about copper prices because my family yeah, is in the scrap junk. business. Yeah. Right. In the scrap business. I, Dad was talking about copper prices all the time. Yeah. The first stock I ever bought was Anaconda Copper Mining Company when I was in college. Yeah. Based on the planets. I did it based on the astrology. 
and a, bo- a book, a little book I found called Donald Bradley's Stock Market Prediction. And in there, he. Oh, yeah. He, the Bradley you know cycle. Book? Yeah. The, well, I know of uh, Bradley's sodograph and so forth. Yeah. In the bag, I didn't care that much about that. But when I saw in the middle of the book, by the way, I found that book. I went to school in Terre Haute, Indiana, Indiana State. And where you would not expect to find any astrology books, but they put the big interstate highway through just south of town there, and they built a big shopping center and brought in chain stores, you know, stores based in big cities like Chicago. And I found an astrology book there and studied that for a year. And then a year later, I stumbled on uh, Donald Bradley's book, uh, one copy at the bottom, at a bottom shelf near the floor all by itself. And yeah. I picked it up and I started flipping through it. And in the middle there, it talked about the 41 business cycle. I grew up hearing about the 41 business cycle because Dr. Copper is always a good leading indicator of the economy. I went and researched that, and I decided that it was time to buy. I looked at my favorite uh, copper mining company, which I, uh, while other kids were studying football players and baseball players, I was studying copper mining companies. Yeah. The biggest copper mining company up until 1970 with Anaconda, and but then they had I half their minds. Yeah. Half their minds were in Chile, and those oh, crazy Chileans they got nationalized them. Huh? Elected a Marxist president, and yeah. he decided he liked the copper mines. So then, his copper and their copper mines were his copper mines, and there went half the company overnight. Mm-hmm. The company was decimated. It went from like a sixty-five dollars stock down to a ten dollars stock, and then the copper prices were in the toilet too. So not only was the company decimated by that, they were losing money or whatever they had left. And I I looked at uh, Bradley's Jupiter and Uranus cycle for a month business. I said, the copper is making a low here. I should buy Anaconda Copper. So that's what I did. And within 18 months, copper went from 55 cents a pound to new all-time highs on the London Mill Exchange to $1.41 a mic. I ended up buying, uh, I had to wait a while because I wasn't 21 yet. And mom would not sign for me. So I had to wait to get be old enough to sign for myself. And so buy stock. And then I had to pay 17 and five eighths. And within 18 months or so, it had gone to over $29. Nice. They say it's unlucky for your first big trade to work. That That's okay. just a floor trader's uh, superstition. Well, that, the money I made on that helped me buy a membership That's, on the yeah. Chicago Board Options Exchange. You have a great story, Norm. You ought to write a little bit, uh, write a biography of your life as a trader. Okay. All right. And I want to thank you for coming here. And, uh, you know, like Blake was saying earlier, there's many ways to skin a cat. And, um, you know, I believe that everything is connected and cycles and planets and tides and everything. Exactly. That's, yeah. we, are a, we are a part of the solar system, Dale. Yeah. And therefore, the human brain, is. It, it, we are entrained to these cycles for genetically for millions of years yeah so you don't need any government news or government agencies who cares what the fed does that's all lagging indicators you want to be on top of the markets this is the way to go well i've been called an ass toroid i miss i miss <laughs> that what is it i've been called an ass toroid asteroid Dale, okay. you're such an asteroid uh I anyway all right, buddy. I had well, my asteroids removed. Uh, good. For you. <laughs> Norm Winsky, everybody. Okay. Well, looking forward to helping some of your folks. Everybody, have a great. All day. right, Norm. Uh, good Call health. Right to away. You. Contact. Good health right to away. you and uh, and good hunting, buddy. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Shabbat shalom, Amira Singh. There you and, go. Uh, I'll see you guys. And that's a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Don't just count the planets, the stars. Count your blessings. Uh, Hope that we've helped add value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader. Uh, That's our goal is to build up and edify traders every day. And uh, I hope we're doing that for each and every one of you. And with that being said, have a great weekend, you warriors, and recharge your battery. See you next week, and we'll, we'll Get them again. Adios.